I knew it. At least this even no, I didn't really know it. At least this even really upset and to my surprise was not trying to argue. On the one hand, it was all fun to look at, but on the other, I felt a bit sorry for Jujuskaya. She deserved it though. Yeah, she totally deserved it. The leader finally finished scolding and left. Elisa was mad. She clenched her fists and was shaking, her face was flushed. It seemed to me that she was going to explode. I sat in the bushes and laughed quietly. However, I was wondering what was on her mind, Kao my hiding place, not afraid of being beaten. So what exactly did you want to show the leader? Me? Elisa turned and looked at me with disbelief. After a moment, surprise turned to anger. You! You! What about me? She calmed down a bit. I wanted to get even with you, she smirked. Meaning, you lost a bet, so I wanted to show Camp Leader how you're stalking me. <sighs> I wonder what wrong could Olga... What wrong could Olga make sure able to find in this situation? Well, let's move on. I see, maybe I should apologize to you? I asked sarcastically. Screw you! She went into the house, slamming the door. I wasn't angry at Elisa. In the end, expecting her to do something like that. Anyway, it went all it all went out without consequences. I was very lucky. Her confusion and embarrassment just made my day. Chuckling, I left Lisa's cabin, which was about to become my death trap. Dot dot dot. I went for lunch with mixed feelings, with a sense of accomplishment and with realization of time wasted. Canteen is crowded. Couldn't say unnoticed, Olga Victory and I called me. Simeon, come to us. Camp leader Slavia Electronic were sitting at the four seat table. I nodded and went to take food. This time I had to spend some minutes in a queue. Today's menu didn't really differ from the other day's menu. Dishes looked the same at least. When I sat at the table and wished bon appetit to everyone, oh. Well, let me sure if I said, so what are you thinking? About what? We searched for sure all around. It is noon and he was nowhere to be found. I took <clears throat> a note of the rhyme, but didn't want to point it out. We looked all over the camp. I went all around the neighboring forest. Olga Dmitrievna looked at me. And I helped, too. <laughs> we must call the police. Maybe we should wait until the evening, I asked lazily. Maybe he went home. It can't be. Shirk lives thousands of miles away. By train? The nearest station, she paused. Is far. Now it's getting interesting. Every time the conversation reaches the point concerning ways I could leave over the end. Sovianok, all the camp inhabitants started changing the subject. How far is far? Really far. Camp leader looked at me, indicating with her look that asking more questions was not advised. So we should go deeper in the forest. Maybe he got lost. Shirk always takes a compass. Chimed in electronic. I wonder what else could be found in this magic vest, if he even has one. If I would get lost in the forest, compass would be a no real use. Yeah, it would. Police! We should call the police in the evening. Not right now, at least. Okay, see you later. They were all silent. We should be able to find him before the evening. We still have time. If he actually got lost, we have no time to lose. We cannot be sure. Then where is he? Where? There was some truth in the camp leader's words. Hiding the whole day just like is suspicious. Why would he do that? Shurik seemed to me quite a serious pioneer. Uliana would have been a better fit with his behavior, so there is a reason to believe that he was gone. All that to be done was already done, we'll just have to wait. Slavia, Electronic, and Olga Dmitrievna looked at me sorrowfully, but haven't said a word. Dot dot dot. I finished my lunch, brought the tray back, and left the canteen. It's still the first half of the day. What now? The camp was drifting to an afternoon nap. Only Jenda stared at me through his glasses. Of course he stared somewhere else, but I had a feeling that he was constantly watching me. Bet he knows where Shurik is hiding. Just can't tell anything. Oh yeah, I forgot that the, the statue's name is Jenda. Gen Genda, Gen I, I don't know. The disappearance of the cybernetics club leader made me think. Maybe it's got something to do with my case. Oh, Pioneer. The nurse stood in front of me. I looked at her curiously. Go and take my place in the infirmary. I have an urgent call. Somebody's injured. Oh. Me? Yes, you. Take the keys. Nurse threw me the keys and ran away. Why me? Isn't there anyone else in this camp? What exactly should I be doing? 
What if something happens? Oh, what can I do now? I missed my chance to, to refuse. I stood in front of the door with uncertainty. On the one hand, there's nothing to worry about. I'll spend here half an hour or so and she'll be back. What if someone comes for an actual help with broken leg or an injured head? I began to worry too much. I hope that there are no serious injuries other than bruises and scratches in this camp. But at the same time, I could not get rid of an idea that in case of a serious situation, I would be absolutely useless. I don't even know how to perform CPR. I do. I got certified in CPR. It's, it's pretty, pretty nice. I just did it at school to everyone. Magazine on a nurse's table caught my attention. A good way to relax, I guess. This is labeled Soviet fashion. Published date or month were absent. However, this was not a surprise. There were much stranger things happening here. I didn't know how much Soviet magazines... I didn't know much about Soviet magazines. Maybe they actually didn't have published dates on them. Models dressed in old-fashioned clothes started me from glossy pages. Nowadays, no one would put on such clothes. I smirked. I wonder if Slavia, for example, considered this fashionable. Only well, imagine what would happen if she appeared in my time wearing something like this. Imagine we are walking it in hand in hand. I'm wearing my coat with the hood, and she's dressed into a lavish dress covered with laces and thingles. Seems like I'm already imagining Slavia in my world, with me. And not only Slavia, this dress better suits Uliana. This cute seraphim would look good on Lisa, the skirt and cardigan would look nice on Lena. If only they could be real. No, I saw them, heard them, could even touch them. But still, they're here and I, I simply don't belong in this place. It's alien for me. I'm just waiting for a chance to get out of here. Waiting because nothing depends on me anymore. I sighed, put my head on the table and fell asleep. Dot dot dot. I was awakened by the noise of the door opening. Lena stood at the door. It was yesterday I promised to help her in the infirmary. Her cheeks began scar became scarlet shortly and I turned away pretending that I'm busy. The nurse is not here, but I'll come back later. I'm substituting her. Since I'm responsible for Pioneer's lives, I should do it with all the responsibility. All the responsibility. Although, in fact, I was just afraid of something happening because of me. Any health complaints? Complaints? Complaints with tea. I tried to give Lena the most accurate smile I could do in order not to confuse her. Nothing special, just a little headache. Let's do this. Some painkiller, maybe? Of course, I wasn't aware where to find the required medics, medicines, so it took me a long time to find them. Finally, I handed M Metamazole tablet to Lena. Thanks, she smiled. That was absolutely unexpected, and so I lost touch with reality, staring at her. Starring at her. What? Lena got awkward in a moment. Listen, I've been wondering, do you like this? Don't know what's got into me, but I grabbed that magazine from the table and showed her that picture of skirt and cardigan. Really? 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 That's, uh, which would really suit Lena, in my opinion. Maybe I went completely nuts thinking about all the girls in my world. Or maybe I wanted to distract myself instead of waiting for the nurse to come back. Lena looked at the picture. Yes, I guess. Is stuff like this in trend? I guess. She got confused and started blushing. Why are you asking? Really, why? Really? Well, bah, bah, bah. This is a little forward. Uh, this is a little bit forward. I'm just, just asking. Dot, dot, dot. We were quiet for some time. How was your headache? Much better, thank you. She smiled. I'll go. Good luck. Lena came out and I continued to look through the magazine. What? That was... No! I, I want to romance her, but not, not that way. Well, somebody knocked at the door again. Seems that infirmary is the most popular place to go. Suddenly, I decided to roleplay a nurse. Just a male version, and said, Come in! The door opened and Uliana entered the room. Wow, did I miss the moment when you started, decided to start knocking? Anything wrong with knocking? She frowned. What's hurting? Why on earth would I tell you? Where is the nurse? In front of you. I imposingly crossed my legs and looked questioningly at her. I better go. Better die than being treated by you. She smiled mischievously. You didn't even try. Liliana thought for a moment. Though you could give me pills. What's bothering you? Took her some time to reply. Heaviness in the stomach. Sure it's not emptiness in the head? Oh! Oh! Oh, I muttered in my breath. What did you say? Nothing, give me a second. I found pills in the first door I opened. 
Thank you, Doctor, she smiled cheerfully. Watching Ileana, I could not imagine how such optimistic and active child could have health problems. 